Hey guys, I'm waiting for another video to render and uh, get uploaded. And while we're doing that, I wanted to respond because we did the video the other day on Allison's journey. And of course, a lot of people had questions and that, there was a great response on that. And I really appreciate what a great conversation there's been about that. And, and just that that went over really well. I was, I've been very nervous about making that one because it's a bit of a touchy subject. And hopefully we treated it well and provided useful guidance for people, not just you know, we're not just here to tell her story. She's done that. We want to uh, be useful in doing that. Um, uh, a number of people, and, and one person was really insistent about this, but the message disappeared. So I wasn't in a position to respond to it because it's not there for me to respond to. But I did see before it disappeared, someone asked me about another situation that there's a YouTuber. Uh, Allison was a YouTuber. It's irrelevant. It was not part of her story, but she was a YouTuber in the past. Um, there is a another YouTuber who is Nicaraguan. Uh, who recently posted a story uh, that that he's now living in the United States and unable to return to Nicaragua. This is a bit more recent um, and only a couple weeks old, whereas Allison's story is several months old. Uh, so a number of people have asked me to comment on this, but this one person was very insistent, right? Oh, you're if he knows, he will definitely tell us what's going on, and he'll have he'll have an opinion, and and you know he would only not voice his opinion if he was scared, which of course is baiting. Right, so I want to step back real quickly and, and just mention I'm going to do a video about this and really dig into some things, um, because because I need a reference video. Right, we often need to make these videos because the same things come up a lot. So I want to mention this briefly. We'll dig into it at a future time. But as a foreigner living in another country, it's not my place to have an opinion on the goings on of the government. It's not my government. I'm not in the polity. I don't vote for them. I can't vote for them. I have no say. My opinion is, do I like the things that result from the government? I don't, I don't care how the sausage is made. I'm here to eat the sausage. I don't work at a restaurant. I'm a customer at the restaurant. I am a customer of the country. And as such, the fact that I'm here means that I probably like the results. I like the parks, the safety, the rule of law. I like all these solid things that make living in Nicaragua really good. And so that is nothing says, and, and we're doing a video about voting with your residency. because I think that's a really important topic that people don't really think about. And, and I want to dig into just the tiniest bit of that on this. But so clearly, I like living here enough to do so voluntarily. So that tells you a lot. But that I'm not from here also tells you a lot. Uh, now, in the video about Allison, or in the, the situation with Allison, this is an expat like me, who's been here an amount of time, like me, who got into a situation I could get into. And the reason that we did the video is not to dig into her story, she did that, but is to, one, help give context because she's a bit in her own head and there's some context that she clearly doesn't have about the story and some that we clearly don't have about the story. But also a lot of people are worried, could this happen to them? Is this something they have to worry about? Does this indicate something? Not because she said anything that would make you believe that, but in looking at the headlines or just being worried about being expats in general, people worry about these things. So we wanted to break down exactly what did happen, what the context is, why you shouldn't worry that it would happen to you because it's not really a risk, but also what steps you should be taking to just always protect yourself, whether you're an expat or not. So there was useful insight and the mistakes that were made, while there's a lot we don't know about Allison's story and a lot she doesn't know and uh, a lot of pretty sure she was taken advantage of, but we don't know. But we know that a lot of the things that went wrong were, I don't, and I use this very loosely, Allison's fault or things within Allison's control or Allison's family's control. Not that they did anything wrong, just there were things that they could have done differently that would have kept them from being in this scenario. And so for my viewers who are worried that this kind of thing could happen to them, could they do things to protect themselves? The answer is yes, we dug into that. I think it's a useful analysis where we have real insight and useful feedback. In this case of this other YouTuber, there's a number of things that are different. First of all, it is a Nicaraguan YouTuber and not a Canadian or North, uh, not a North American YouTuber. So the situation is completely different. He's not an expat. And so there is no, uh, no relationship with my situation. So I have no uh, uh, relational connection to him. That people are asking me about him is 
completely and utterly random. I have no more insight than any random person living on the street flipping burgers in Nigeria, right? I am not a part of the country that is there. I'm not a viewer of his. I don't know him personally. I know neither side of the equation. And what we know from his YouTube is very little, partially because he says he knows very little, and that's fine, uh, but there's a YouTube video where he explains that he's no longer able to re-enter the country. And he says he doesn't know exactly why, but he has some information, and he provides that. The one thing that he did know is that it had nothing to do with him being a YouTuber. So this is the one useful piece of analysis that is good for me to provide, because a lot of people, well-meaning, I'm sure, have mentioned he was a YouTuber and he got in trouble, could this affect you as a YouTuber? But he didn't get in trouble, or he, we don't even know. We don't know anything about the situation, right? This is very important because every time someone wants to bait us, because I know I'm being baited in some of these questions, they're trying to get me to voice an opinion about the actions of a government that I don't even know if those actions happened. I don't know if this person's real. I don't know if the actions happened. I know nothing. Right. In the case of Allison's story, I don't know if she's real either, but I can analyze her story and protect you against that scenario, regardless of whether the story is real or Allison is AI generated. It doesn't make any difference. But in the case of, uh, because we're talking about how do you protect against the, a hypothetical situation? But in this other case, people are not asking, how do you protect against it? Because we're not at risk of it. We're not citizens. We're not, we're totally different. There's no relationship. What they're asking for is me to voice an opinion about the about actions that I know nothing about to the point of I don't know if they happened. I don't know what actions it is they want me to voice an opinion on. And people will try to pretend that they know what those actions are. But then they'll say he got in trouble for being a YouTuber. Well, the one thing that he said in his video that was clear is that it had nothing to do with him being a YouTuber. So even that one very loose connection to me that we both use the same platform for creating media, which is super general, like you both breathe oxygen, you both eat French fries, right? That that was not a common threat. So we have literally no common threats. That's the first piece. Second piece, I don't know any piece of it is true. And I don't know what the pieces are, right? He gives some information. You can watch his stuff. You can form an opinion on it if you want. But I would advise to be careful forming opinions about something with so little information, right? I don't know that he has enough information to really form an opinion. I don't know who he is, right? I've never seen him before. I don't watch his stuff. I don't watch that many Spanish language YouTubers. I'm sure, he's popular. He's got tons of followers, right? But I know nothing. And so uh, it's, it's very important to understand, one, that there are appropriate things for me to speak on, things that I have some connection to, things that I know about, things that I can help people uh, by voicing uh, um, analysis on. And there is inappropriate, where I would be formulating a fake opinion just to get a rise out of people, uh, speaking about things I know nothing about and cannot help anybody with. It wouldn't do no one any good to have an opinion. Not one of my viewers is in a situation where analyzing that situation, if we could, which we can't, because we don't know enough to do any analysis. You have to know something about what exactly happened and how, right, uh, to be able to come up with something useful. But also, my viewers are not in a position, we assume, for whatever it is that happened to him. So we can't be providing protection against that or advisement as to how to behave or whatever. We don't know what happened, if anything happened, so we don't know what to say. Right, so it's not useful to someone. So when people are asking about it, I know some people are asking because they see YouTuber, they're, they're not watching the video, it's in Spanish, it's hard to follow. Uh, for English speakers. Uh, they, they're they worried about my well-being, and so they're like, something bad happened to another YouTuber? In theory, are you afraid? No, right? No connection to me whatsoever. Whatever, right? But there's other people, and I noticed that their comments disappeared, and there were awesome community members defending me, like, stop trying to bait him. Clearly, he knows not to just spout off about things he doesn't know about, uh, which I really appreciate people taking the time to, to say that. Um, but, you know, people are trying to say that, you know, the if I don't come out and voice an opinion about it, it means something, and they try to put words in my mouth, right? And, and either try to use it as an opportunity to make political statements um, without foundation, or to make statements to bait me into having to defend myself, right? Oh, I didn't say that, I, you know, and then having to explain it.
So one, we have very strict policies about not baiting on the community, but that was it was taken down not by me. Um, I don't know if YouTube did it or they took it down voluntarily. Um, but for everyone who is wondering about this, because it's a legitimate concern and people really do wonder, um, I wanted to have this video to be able to say, look, I'm aware of the situation as best as I can be. And the one thing I'm aware of is that it has absolutely no connection to me and I am unrelated to it. It sounds like an unfortunate circumstance, but I don't know. It sounds like it really happened, but I don't know. I don't have an opinion either way, and I don't have any background information. Everyone's just looking at a YouTuber saying something and then running with it from there, and who knows, right? There's a lot that you can, if you analyze what he's saying over the course of you know several weeks, you may be able to hypothesize some things, but I caution you against trying to do so from any direction because there's just not enough reliable information and not any useful information that there is nothing to be gained by doing so. I also want to point out, I did get an email from one of my insiders <clears throat> who definitely was um, voicing real concern about me, uh, unrelated, uh, and, and made a comment that, you know, he was worried that I was afraid of something, that do I have to be careful with what I say? And obviously, I always want to be careful with what I say, just because I don't want to say things that are wrong. So I mean, on one side, yeah, I always try to be careful, because I'm trying not to give misinformation, I'm trying not to mislead people. But there's a concern that maybe I'm living with some kind of fear. And, and a really important point that I think people miss, it's really easy to miss, is that I can live anywhere I want. Um, within reason, right? I can't just move to Russia. I can't just move to South Africa, but most countries I can move to. And certainly, basically everywhere in Latin America and most of Europe are just completely open to me. I can move there at a moment's notice. In many cases, I have in the past. I choose to live in Nicaragua because I choose to. Um, if you're worried about how I feel about that, the fact that I remain here is the strongest information that you can possibly get, right? Nothing, and this is leads into a video we're about to make of voting with your residency, but there are very few things that you can do that are as meaningful as your residency. Where I choose to live tells you more than anything I could say in words about how I feel about my safety, my family's safety being in Nicaragua, right? We feel safe to the point where we choose this as our home. Clearly, safety is not the only reason that you choose a place to live, but everything that I do, right, I have a job, I have the ability to live where I want, I do not need, I certainly don't make money from YouTube, right, very few people do, certainly not me, um, <clears throat> and this is something I do as a passion project, and um, I think delivers value, and I think it plays an important role. And I live in Nicaragua because this is where it makes sense for my family. And we have no ties to Nicaragua. We're not here because we have other family. We're not here because it's the one place that would take us. We're not here because of any of those things. We're not here because we can't afford to live somewhere else. We're here because having evaluated many countries and doing lots of research, Nicaragua provided the exact things that best suited our family. And, and I think for a lot of other people, that is also true or likely to be true or potentially true. And so sharing that with people is important. But to think that I voluntarily live here when I could just move anywhere at the drop of a hat, if I suddenly felt that, that I was in danger for some reason, well, I could just move to Honduras or El Salvador or Guatemala or Argentina immediately. It would take nothing. I could be gone in 24 hours relatively conveniently. And I'm still here because it continues to be the place that we want to be. So we're going to be doing an important video on uh, voting with your wallet and voting with your residency. I think those are really important topics that no one ever talks about. And I'm going to be heading to Managua in the morning to do uh, some just hanging out with my kids and going to restaurants and stuff. Hopefully I'll be able to do some filming while I'm there. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next episode. Make sure to go watch the Allison episode, watch the new baseball stadium episode, and definitely stay tuned for uh, hopefully tomorrow. I have not yet recorded it, the episode on voting with your residency. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.